Hi, we're going to have a look at the 2018 Leave Insert Ordinary Level Ratio question. This is always question five on the Ordinary Level paper. There's usually four different parts to it. Part A, we're asked to work out four ratios. Part B, we're asked to explain four definitions and relate them back to the accounts. And then part C and D, one of them is usually to talk about the asset test ratio, have the difficulty paying debts as default due. That's just another way of asking about the asset test or quick ratio. And part D is usually return on capital employed. So we're going to start off with part A. The first thing we're asked to do is to work out the figure for purchases. So here we can see we're given in the trading profit and loss account, and we have to try and work out this purchases figure here. So to do that, Again, this is just similar to what's on the question. So to work out the purchases, the first thing we're going to need to do is to work out the cost of sales. Well, if I have my sales figure of 660,000 and I have my gross profit of 352,000, to get my cost of sales figure, it will just be the difference between the two of those, which is 308,000. So to work back upwards, some figure less 14 gives me 308. That figure must be 308 plus 14, which is 322,000. So my opening stock of 26 plus my purchases give me 322, which means my purchases would be 322 minus 26, which is 296,000. So for part one, purchases are 296,000. The second thing we're asked is the net profit margin. So for net profit margin, we just need to know the formula for net profit margin. And there's eight or 10 of these formulas you need to know that are asked every year. You'd be asked four out of the eight or 10 every year. The formula for net profit margin is net profit over sales multiplied by 100. So if we go back to the question up above here, I can see that my net profit is 254,000. So my net profit, 254,000. Over my sales, which I will get from the top of the question here, 660,000. And again, I'm going to multiply that by 100 because my answer will be in percentage. So it's going to be equal to 254,000 divided by 660,000 multiplied by 100. So the net profit margin works out to be 38.48%. And again, I'm just gonna round these off to two decimal places always. The third ratio we are asked to calculate is the period of credit given to debtors. So to work out the period of credit given to debtors, again, the formula for this is debtors over credit sales multiplied by 365, because your answer is in days. So for debtors, I'm going to go to the balance sheet to get my figure. So for debtors, I can see here, trade debtors are 65,000. So I'm gonna put 65,000. Over credit sales, which I will get from the P&L in the question, or I also have it above here, so I can just take it from here. 660,000 multiplied by 365. So 65,000 divided by 660,000 multiplied by 365, my period of credit given to debtors is 35.95%. And just remember that sales always go with debtors, and if we were asked the period of credit received from creditors, creditors would always go with purchases. So sales go with debtors and uh, purchases go with creditors. The fourth part, or the fourth ratio we're asked to work out is the acid test ratio. The acid test ratio, and sometimes it may be called the quick ratio. So to work this out, we're going to get our current assets and take away our closing stock, and then compare that to current liabilities. So if I go back to the question, I can see that my current assets are 93,000. I'm going to take away my closing stock, which is 14. So it's going to be 93,000 minus 14,000. And I'm going to compare that to my current liabilities. And my current liabilities, I will get from my balance sheet. Liabilities um, due within one year, they're my current liabilities, and they come to 52,000. There's only one of them, trade creditors, 52,000. Sometimes there may be more than one, then you have to take the total of them. 
but here it is just 52,000. So 93,000 minus 14,000 is 79,000, and I'm comparing that to 52,000. So it has a ratio, if I get my 79 divided by 52, it's 1.52 is to 1. So that is part of the question done. I worked out my four ratios. Part B of the question, if I look at part B of the question, it says explain the following terms and state how they apply to the above accounts where appropriate. So we have to explain what these four terms mean and then relate them back to the accounts because if there's 10 marks for each one, usually five will be given for um, relating them back to the accounts. So the first thing I'm asked to talk about are the benchers. So 6% the benchers, 2022-2023. So first of all, the benchers are long-term loans. They will be repaid in full during the years 2022 and 2023. That's when they have to be repaid. And they carry a fixed annual rate of interest of 6% because there's 6% debentures. So to relate it back to the question, Larchfield has a debenture of 90,000. If we go down to the balance sheet, we should see here debentures are worth 90,000. The second thing we are asked to explain in the question is interest paid. So this is the extra money paid to the lender for the use of money borrowed from a bank. The cost of borrowing money. It's usually a percentage, like 2 or 3% or something like that. So to relate it back to the question, in the question it doesn't tell us um, the percentage that we pay for on interest, but it does tell us that the interest paid during the year was 5,400. So we can just say large field paid interest of 5,400 during the year. The third term we have to explain are tangible fixed assets. So tangible fixed assets, these are assets that have real value and can be seen. They are items of value that you can see and touch, example, buildings, delivery vans, and equipment. These are opposed to intangible fixed assets, which you cannot see or touch. An example of intangible fixed assets would be people's goodwill. Now, Larchfield has fixed assets. We're talking about tangible fixed assets here. Larchfield has fixed assets which cost 980,000 and have a net book value of 917. So they cost 980 and they have a net book value or they're worth 917 now. And where am I getting those figures from? They are coming from the balance sheet. The cost is 980 and the net book value is 917. And the last thing we have to explain is ordinary dividend. So this is the part of the net profit paid out to ordinary shareholders. It is decided by the directors and, a, and is a percentage of the issued ordinary share capital. So again, ordinary dividends are slightly different than preference dividends. And it doesn't say in the question how much dividends we paid, so we can't relate that back to the question because we're not given the information here in the PL. That's part B of the question done. Part C says, would Largefield Limited have difficulty in paying its debts as the fall due? Give a reason for your answer. So when they ask this question, you simply comment on the asset test ratio. Okay. Now, we have the asset test ratio worked out already above, but sometimes you may not have it done in part A. So we'll just do it again here anyway. Because if you won't have it done, you'll have to do it again here. So how did I do it? I just got my current assets, which were... 93,000 and I took away my closing stock which is 14,000. I know it's 14,000 because it's the end of the year. So I had 93 minus 14 and I'm comparing that to my liabilities less than one year and my current liabilities of 52. So it's 93,000 minus 14,000 and I'm comparing that to 52,000. So 93 minus 14 would leave me with 79, and I'm comparing that to 52,000. And that works out as above to 1.52 1. In the exam, there'll be no need to work it out again, but I've just shown it here in case we hadn't done in part A. So we have to comment on it. Will they have difficulty paying their debts as the fall due? So with the asset test ratio, if it's above one is to one, it's, they won't 
have difficulty picking their deaths as they fall due. If this was less than one, if it was 0 0.75 or 0 0.8 is to one, then they would have difficulty picking their deaths as they fall due. So here it's over one is to one, it's 1 1.52 is to one. So no, they won't have difficulty paying their debts as they fall due. Largely, they would not have difficulty paying debts as they fall due as their asset test ratio is 1.52 is to one, which is greater than the ideal of one is to one. Now, what does this mean? This means that they have one euro 52 available for every one euro they owe in the short term, because that's what the asset test ratio tells us about the short term. If this was 0 0.75, would mean that a 0 0.75 euro or 75 cent available for every one euro owed, which would be bad. The last part of the question says, calculates so the return on capital employed for large field in 2016, so the previous year return on capital employed was 19%. So we have to work it out for 2017 and then we have to comment on it. And again, this is usually part C or D. C and D are usually the asset test ratio and return on capital employed. So first of all, we have to work out the return on capital employed. So how do we do that? We get our net profit and we add our interest. So if I go back to my accounts, I'm going to get my net profit, which in this question is 254,000. And I'm going to add my interest of 5,400. So 254,000, 5,400 over the capital employed. Now the capital employed is just the total of the balance sheet. So the total of my balance sheet here is 958,000. That's what the capital employed is. So I'm gonna put this over 958,000. And again, I'm gonna multiply it by 100 to get my answer as a percentage. So 254,000, 5,400 gives me 259,400. And that's going to be over 958,000 multiplied by 100. So to work this out, I'm going to have that divided by 958 multiplied by 100, which leaves me with 27.08% for my return on capital employed this year. So now I can see that this year my return on capital employed is 27.08%. just to fill that in, is 27.08%, and last year it was 19%. So we just have to comment on this now. So we start off by saying that the return on capital employed for 2017 was 27.08%, which marks an increase from 19% in 2016. So it's gone up from 19 to 27.08%. This is a good return and shows that the company is profitable. So it's a big return, 27% is a big return. Say in or around anything over 10% would be seen as a good return well above the rate available from risk-free investments such as bank building societies and credit unions of two to three percent so if you put your money in a bank or a building society or a credit union you might get a return of two to three percent there's no risk involved with putting your money in banks so you only earn a small enough return of two to three percent if you invest your money in a company there is a risk that if the company goes bad you won't get any money back so because of that risk you expect to earn a higher return and we're earning a much higher return of 27%, which is much higher than 2 to 3%, which is good. And it's also well above the cost of borrowing on debentures of 6%. So we can see from our balance sheet that we're paying 6% interest on our loans. If the company was making less than that 6%, there'd probably be no money, sorry, there'd probably be no reason um, for borrowing money and paying 6% interest if we're making a return less than 6%. So the return on capital employed should always be greater than the cost of borrowing or whatever percentage they are paying on the ventures. And that is the solution to the 2018 leave insert ordinary level ratio question.